Hello, welcome to another interesting episode of Strength of Material. Today we are going to solve a problem. Please subscribe to the channel, share the video, and drop your comment. So let's see what we have for today. It says find the minimum size of a hole that can be punched in a 20 millimeters thick mouse steel plate having ultimate shear strength of 300 newton per millimeter square the maximum permissible compressive stress in the punch material is also 1200 newton per millimeter square so here it is very interesting. We want to punch a hole in a mouth steel, but we know the various strengths of the steel. So we first have the ultimate shear strength. That means the ability of the mouth steel to withstand shear. So we have the shear strength to be 300. And also, as we are going to punch the hole, we are going to exert a compressive stress on the material and its compressive stress is also 1200 newton per millimeter square so here we are to find the minimum size of the hole that we can punch in the steel material in order for it to be able to go well are we okay because we know the various strengths if we go beyond a certain size the material is going to fail so how then do we find a suitable size for the hole that we are going to construct in the mouth steel so this is quite simple let's look at what we can do so let's write down the parameters we are given a thickness of plates so we have thickness of plates and that is equal to 20 millimeters and also we are given some ultimate shear strength ultimate shear strength that is going to be 300 newton per millimeter square we also have the last one as the maximum so i'll call that as maximum permissible compressive stress stress and that one is 1200 the same newton per millimeter square so first let's draw a free body diagram to represent the mouse steel are we okay but before we do that we always know that our stress formula is giving us the force per unit length or the force per unit area change in length to the unit length becomes the strain but here we are dealing with the stress so i can draw a free body diagram of a shape where i want to construct the hole so this is let's say a mouse to plate this is the plate a nice plate like this and we want to construct or punch a hole inside this plate like this are we okay we know that this is the thickness we are given the thickness of the plate as 20 millimeters and we want to punch a hole throughout the 20 millimeter thick plate here what we are going to consider we will call the diameter so this is the diameter of the hole as we want the size that we can get we will consider the diameter so this is the diameter of the hole i can bring it out here so let's assume this is what i'm going to construct and it is going to go through a 20 
millimeter thick plate. So this is it. And we still have the diameter over here as D. All right, so this is the free body diagram. I've just drawn the hole again here so that we can get it clearly. And this is also the thickness T. So from here, now we have two stresses. We have ultimate shear and we also have maximum permissible compressive stress. Are we okay? So we can recall from our analysis that we have shear area. Remember, as we are trying to punch the hole with, let's say, a needle through the plate, we are going to cause a shear. The surfaces are going to slide over each other, and that is going to cause a shear, right? And we still know that our shear stress is still going to be forced on area. But shear area is different from the compressive stress area. Do you get that? Whenever we have a thickness of a material given, then our shear area, the shear area is going to be, I'm going to consider the hole as a circular one. Are you okay? We were not given any clue as it was a rectangular or circular, or but in this instance, let's assume that the hole is what? A circular hole. So, in that case, we are going to get our shear area as pi dt, where d is the diameter and t is the thickness that we were given. Is that okay? So we have shear area as pi dt. And we also know that shear stress is still force over area. So can I make force the subject? So the force is going to be the area which is pi dt. So I'm considering the shear. Pi dt as the area multiplying the shear stress or the shear strength. And this is going to be pi multiplying d. Do we have the t? I'm still going to work in millimeters, 20. And what is the shear strength? That is 300 Newton per millimeter square. Are we okay? And with this, our force from the shear strength is going to give us 600 pi d. So calculating for the force from the shear strength, we are going to get 600 pi d. Let me call this as equation one. So this is the force from the shear. Let me call it F from S. We can also consider the compressive stress. So considering the compressive stress, we can also get a force there, right? Because that stress is also force on an area. But the compressive area is a different area. Now we can say that the force from the compressive stress is going to be the ultimate stress. That is the ultimate or maximum compressive stress. That is the two or 1200 multiplying the area, the compressive area. And this area is going to be given us from the whole, it is going to be pi d squared on four. Are we okay? Because shear stress takes place at a certain point of what? The contact, that's why we were focusing on pi dt. But if we are going to consider the compressive stress, it is going to take place throughout the surface. So we are going to consider the entire area as pi d squared on 4. So bringing this into the formula, we are going to have our FC as the force from the compressive to be 1200 multiplying pi d square on 4. Are we okay? So with this, we can also compress the FC. So our FC here, force from the compressive is going to be 300 pi d square. That is equation two.
what do you see? We have two forces now. The force from the shear and the force from the compressive stress. So here the assumption is if Fc is equal to Fs, then we can make an analysis, right? So we are going to assume that the compressive force is equal to the ultimate shear strength force, the force due to the shear. So if we are going to equate that, then let's look at what we are going to get from the two equations. Now we can write this as first we know that the equation one is 600 or 6000. Here we are getting 6000, yes, 6000 pi d. So we are going to get it as 6000 pi d should be equal to we are getting 300 pi d squared. The minimal size means, looking at this equation, we are only going to get the diameter, and the diameter can give us the size, right? So we have to check out for the diameter. This pi will cancel out. D will take one of the D out. So we are going to get 6,000 should be equal to 300 D. And from here, our D will be 6,000 on 300, 6,000 on 300. So this will take this out and take this out. 3 into this as 2, giving us 20. We are still working in millimeters, so that is going to be 20 mm. So we can conclude that, therefore, the minimum size that we can use to punch a hole in this mass still should be a diameter of what? 20 millimeters. Are you okay? It is very simple. So you consider the ultimate shear, you find the diameter, you consider the compressive stress, you find the diameter. But the tricky part is the area for the shear and the area for the compressive stress. I hope you get it. This is a very simple one. Check out for the next episode.